Hello, 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 and welcome to Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. I am so honored and excited to have you join me on today. Listen, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to come on in the room. Join our Facebook group um, where you will receive real talk, real truth, real love, real wisdom, real help, and real transformation. I also invite you to join us on YouTube. Go ahead and like and subscribe, like and subscribe so you can stay connected to all God is doing through woman to woman uh, to help you with your holistic self care. Amen. Now let's dive on into what you came for today. Hey, ladies, it is me, Lady Aisha Fisher, back again um, to follow up on some decrees for family blessing and breakthrough. On yesterday, I came through and talked about fasting, miracles, and peace. So if you missed that, make sure to go back and watch it and then share it into your realm of influence. Amen? Amen. Today, we are going to talk about the topic as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for you are so worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for the privilege and the honor to know you, to worship you, and to be called into your presence as your own. I thank you for this, another opportunity to spread your good news into all of the earth. I thank you, God, for choosing me to do great things for your kingdom. I thank you, God, um, for the opportunity to help people to live the abundant life that Christ offers. So have your way in our time together. Move in the hearts and minds of those who are hearing my voice in Jesus' name that they will be receptive um, to the word that is going forth and that that this word would not return void and that it would uh, bear fruit that remains in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So here's some encouragement for you. One of the most important things a family can do is decide that their home will be a place where God is honored. This means that anything that would dishonor the Lord is not allowed access to the premises. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. This means that anything, somebody say anything, that would dishonor the Lord, somebody say that would dishonor the Lord, is not allowed, somebody say is not allowed <laughs> access to the premises. Amen. I'm going I'm to pause here because it says is not allowed access to the premises. And that made me think about a landlord, right? And I've used this example many times and I will continue to use it because it's a good one, right? When you have a landlord, they have authority. They are the owners of the property. They get to tell the tenant what they can do and what they cannot do, right? They are the Lord of that land, of that premise, right? So. In the same way, God is supposed to be the Lord of our lives. What does that mean? As the Lord, he is the owner. (laughs) And he is the one who gets to tell us what we can do and what we cannot do. Amen. And so we need to keep that in mind as we are living out our daily lives. That our lives, if you are a follower of Christ, right? Our lives don't belong to us. God is supposed to be our Lord, right? There are levels to our salvation. First, we just know him as God, right? He's God. But then as you begin to mature, he becomes your, you, you, you view him as your father. And as you begin to mature more, you begin to view him as your Lord, Lord, ruler of your life, 
Amen. And so we, I encourage you to begin to get that mindset that just like a landlord is in charge of a property, we are God's property and he is to be the Lord of the life that he has given us. Amen. Amen. Y'all got to listen. When I, when, when, when we come across stuff, sometimes it might not have to do, might not seem like it has to do with the topic, but if we there, we might as well stop and touch it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It says all that is, all that is said and done should carry the Lord's honor upon it. Moses taught the children of Israel that they were to teach their children to praise and honor God in everything they did. Somebody say everything. Now somebody say everything. Right? We got I'm going to try to speak in everybody's language so everybody gets it. Amen. This was not to be a one-time decision. It was something they acknowledged in an ongoing way ongoing way. We talked about that yesterday about how prayer is supposed to be ongoing, right? There is so much in our culture that dishonors God today. And over time, it can be easy to unintentionally allow things to creep into our homes that are in opposition to the Lord. Somebody say opposition. Amen. Anything that is not in God of God is in opposition of God. Okay, it is opposed to the things of God. All right, the, the, the simple world we live in, it is a carnal, simple world that we live in. And the ruler of it, of the sinful world that we live in, opposes the Lord. Right? And so we are not to be consumed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that allows us to oppose anything that is not of God. Amen? Regularly making the verbal declaration that your house will be one that gives God the, per, the, the preeminence in everything, first place, right, will ensure your home remains free of the things that would bring dishonor to him, okay? Regularly making the verbal declaration that your house will be one that gives God the preeminence in everything, God is first in everything in my life, everything in my home. This will ensure your home remains free of things that would bring dishonor to God. Amen. So let's dive into the word. The, the, the scripture that they provided in this, this daily devotional is Joshua 24, 15. Um, and it says um, in a nutshell, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, the Lord. Now, the question becomes, and it kind of touches on, maybe I should have did the whole thing. Who is your Lord? That's the question. Because you see how this is all caps Lord. That's how it was in the, in the Bible, but that's the reality. There are little Lords, lowercase L, just like there are lowercase G's, right? And what we have to be careful of is who is our Lord? What is our Lord? What have we placed in first place? What has preeminence in our life? Mm, right? And so we have to make sure, let me say this, whatever is your Lord, whoever is your Lord, that's who you're going to worship. That's what you're going to worship. So you have to review what, what, what is your worship going to? <laughs> what is your worship going to? Right? Are, are, do you worship your children? Do, do you worship your spouse? Do you worship um, making money? Do you worship uh, sports? What is it? What, whatever it is. Do you, do, do you worship um, whatever? Okay? Sex? Do you worship that? What do you worship? Because whatever you worship, that is your Lord, whatever that, that, whatever that, that has taken the place of God, taken the place, taking God's place as a Lord in your life. And so I encourage you to do some um, real talk with yourself and do an, uh, an introspection of what's really going on in your life and be honest with yourself so that you can make changes um, to move, to, 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 to draw closer to God. Amen. Amen. 
And so that is the scripture that the 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 um, devotional uses. But you know, I always t do a little twist, right? I gotta I gotta do what works for me and what's going to. I, I chew the meat and I, and I spit out the bones, right? And so sometimes, um, a lot of times, most of the time, <laughs> God gives me more, and that's a good thing. Okay. And so Deuteronomy six four through seven in the Amplified Bible reads: Hear, O Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one, the only God. Somebody say only God. God is a jealous God and he desires to be and deserves to be the only God in your life. Amen. You shall love the Lord, your God. God is to be Lord of your life, right? With all your heart, a little bit. No, all your heart, with all your mind, a little bit. No, all your mind, with all your soul. Soul is made up of your intellect and emotions, right? All, a little bit, no, all of your intellect, all of your emotions, and with all your strength, right? Your entire being should love the Lord. And when your entire being loves the Lord, he becomes first. He becomes priority in your life. And you do everything you can to please him. You find out what he likes. You find out what he loves. Where? In the word of God. You get in your word and you find out how to love him the way he desires to be loved. Amen. These words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Diligently, intentionally teach them to your children. I touched on that in yesterday's video, right? We have to train them in the things of God. That means we have to know what the things of God are so that we can train them. That also means that we have to example before them what the things of God are so that they don't think you're a hypocrite and dishonor God. <laughs> hallelujah okay you shall teach them diligently to your children impressing god's precepts on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truths precepts his truths his word what does he say his morals his values his teachings okay you should you, uh, you 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 should you should impress them on their on your children's minds and and, and so that they're penetrating their hearts with his, with his truth so that their hearts are being penetrated with his truth and shall speak of them when you sit in your house what are you speaking of when you're sitting in your house we talked yesterday about your house being a place of peace are you the one bringing chaos with all of your cussing and all of your gossip and all of your negativity, hmm, right? When you sit in your house, what are you speaking of? Because guess what? Your children hear you. They hear what you're saying, right? Uh, when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road, back then in the Bible, they walked everywhere. And as they were walking, they taught their children the things of God. So now well, how, do we, how, do, how do we fast forward and, and make that, apply that to our lives today in your car? When you're in your car, that's a place. That's that's a perfect place. You know why? They can't get out. <laughs> they can't get out of the car. Have them put down them them phones, take out the earbuds, and have a conversation with them. At a time where they can't escape. Even if you don't get no response, you know, if it, the, you know these teenagers here, even if you don't hit, get a response, if there's no earbuds in their in their ears and there's no phone that has their attention, if there's nothing that's distracting their attention, they hear you, whether they respond or not. They hear what you're saying. So use that time to speak into their lives. Amen. When you're in your home, speak into their lives. Speak the things of God. When you're when you're when you're on in the car, speak into their lives. Speak the things of God. Um, and when you lie down, what? Before you go to sleep every night, we have devotions with our family before we go to sleep. That should be the last thing on their mind is the word of God. Some encouragement from their parents. We talk about the day. We open the floor for communication about concerns, questions, comments, concerns, and we pray. 
and, 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 and we let that be the last impression before they lay down to bed, right? And then again, when you get up in the morning, what, children need a routine. You need a routine too, right? So really you have to get some self-control over your own life so that you can then example it before your children. That's real talk, right? And so when they get up in the morning, when my children get up, they, ha they have to do a devotional. Proverbs, they have to, there are 31 chapters in Proverbs. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. They read one a day. So if it's the first, they read Proverbs one. If it's the second, they read Proverbs two. One proverb, one, one word of wisdom every day to start their morning so that they get their mind right. And they and, and 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 they and they begin to allow the word of God to transform their mind and their thinking. That's the plan. It may not it may not seep in and, and, and work and you see the fruits of it right away. But the, the purpose is to train them. OK, the purpose is to train them. And so it is our job to train them to sit, to make our house a place where God is work, welcome to speak of God in our homes, in our cars, um, be, to, uh, be, to teach them how to um, speak of God and speak to God before they lay down and when they wake up. That's needed. OK, and so that's training them to serve the Lord. You're training them that God is priority in our lives. We had our devotions tonight. We had our devotions tonight and um, pastor said, my husband said, um, I want y'all to keep in mind what the priorities are, what the standards are, what the rules are. I can't remember what the word is. He yet said for our family, for our family and our family and our family, we obey the parents. We obey our parents and our family. In our family, we don't lie. We don't lie in our family. In our family, God determines our standard, right? You have to tell them, what are your expectations in your home? And what are your expectations for your family? Amen? We, we are to train our children. That means we got to have some training. And I know it may be uncomfortable for a lot of us, for a lot of people didn't have that growing up. And that's that's OK. That just means you have to be in. It, it's, it's not an excuse. Don't make it an excuse. That just means you have to be very intentional to learn how to do it so that you can provide a better environment and a better a better start in life for your children than you had. Amen. Amen. And so the declaration the declaration, the declaration, um, it says, today we declare that all who live in our home will serve the Lord. We declare that all who live in our home will serve the Lord. Somebody say that. Say, I declare that all who live in my home will serve the Lord. That's important because I mentioned on last week, you cannot make your spouse do anything. But if you have children, you are the mama. <laughs> you are the mama. Okay. And so if children from age zero to 99 Zero to 99. If they live in your house, they need to obey your rules. You need to set some rules. You need to set the standard. And then you need to require them to follow them, to follow the rules in your home. This is your home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, right? If you are a follower of Christ, your rule should be, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so if you have an adult living with you that is unwilling to abide by your rules, your standards for your house, guess what needs to happen? They need to find a new house. They need to find somewhere else to live. They need to find somewhere else to live. And then they can, they can, they can be more than, 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 than um, free to make their own rules. If they don't like these rules, well, you find you a home where you can make your own rules, right? 
we have to take a stance for God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's not just something to, to read in the Bible. It's something to apply to your life. We have that. When we was doing, we have that in our home. It's right in our uh, entryway. So when who anybody that's walking in the house can see that. Your, your eyes are, it's right in front of you. So when we were doing our devotions, this, this is what we did. We, we, did, we did this. I'm just sharing it with you so that you can share it in your home and in your realm of influence. Okay. So I had them get up. We were sitting in the living room. I said, y'all, I said, I said, I said, is, th is that in our house? And they said, yeah. And they all knew where it was. I said, get up and go look at it. I wanted them to go look at it. Right. We also have in our home another sign that says, and, and that's another thing. It says in your, um, back in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, it says, um, that your that, 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 these things should be in your home. I think that I didn't read eight, but it says it there on the gates of your of your house and of your home. What does that mean? That things like that should be your decor in your home, right? Part of part of part of allowing um, a, there being a, a place of peace in your home is the environment that that you that you set up. The core. What is the decor? Is it is it is it? Are, are you more? Um, cultural like i i can just remember back in the day that people would have these statues of naked women women black women oh oh I, it's a black women black you no it's a naked woman and you have a son that's a problem it's a naked women woman and you have a daughter that's a problem and they see in this every day what do you have before your children every day what is the decor of your home? Mm, we got You got to think about those things and you have to be intentional, right? But we have a sign that say, oh, and the other day I, we had a, um, we got, I bought this um, um, th um, crown of thorns and I had it sitting where the TV is. Well, I have a two-year-old and he, he is getting tall. So now he can reach it. And so he grabbed it. Woo, glory to God. And he hurt his little hand. That hurt. They're the real thorns. They are real thorns. So he grabbed it. And then when I tried to take it from him, you know, he's at that age where he's pulling back now. So when he pulled back, it hurt even more. Oh, Lord. It's hurting my heart. So I had to move it. And I put it up in the little archway because in my archway I have on the left, I have um, a cross that shows um, all of the different scenes of Christ's birth. And then on the on the left and then on the right is a cross that has all of the different scenes of him um, uh, of Christ um, um, being crucified and resurrected. And so in the middle of it, the, I, I put the, 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 the crown of thorns and I moved it. And so my husband seated it and he mentioned it in, in church. And, he you know, he said, I was praying and I looked up and I saw that. And and it, and it and it had an impact on him, and it brought something to mind. What what is what are the images in your home bringing to mind? What is it? What are they reminders of? You have to be intentional. And so another sign that we have um, it, it says Christ is the head of this home, the unseen guest at every meal, the silent listener at every conversation, and that is on the wall in our living room, right? And so I had them all look at it. I said, turn around, look, it was right now when we were doing the devotions tonight, they were sitting in the living room. I said, turn around, look at that sign in there. And I had them read it, right? I want them to be reminded of what the standards of our home are. As for, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. And you have to teach them how to do that. You can't just say we're going to serve the Lord and then leave them at home when you go to church. Oh my goodness. That's hypocritical. And that's why they have no reverence for God. My God, my God. Just say ouch and correct it. Amen. Hallelujah. But I can remember a time my, my, when my oldest daughter was in high school, she was sitting at the table in the living room with two, two girls. And um, I was sitting in the, in, the, in the living room. And so they were talking, ha, 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 he, 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 loud as, as, as girls are laughing loud and talking loud and having fun. And then all of a sudden, 
they started whispering. <laughs> you need you better pay attention to what's going on in your home. You need to pay attack. I don't like to say better. I encourage you to pay attention. You 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 sh you need to. You need to pay attention to what is going on in your house. Okay? So I heard the whispering and I stood up. And when I stood up, I got all of their attention cuz they knew they was doing wrong. They don't they didn't know if I could hear what they were saying or not, but it didn't matter. They knew they were doing wrong, and that's why they chose to start whispering. And I pointed to the sign, and they all looked at the sign. They read the sign, and then they turned their heads and looked down at the table. What? What? Do, do you see? You have to be intentional in setting the atmosphere. One of the girls never came back, and that's okay. That's okay. Because guess what? This is what goes down in, in my house, and if, you, if, you, if, if you're not okay with that, so you got to learn, you have to learn how to be okay um, with not letting everybody and everything in your environment. You have to be okay with not letting everything and everybody in your environment. You have to guard your home, your peace, your gates. The Amen? Amen. All right. Where we at? That was just the first line. <laughs> All right. It says, I prophesied that each member of this household honors God in word, action, and deed. We are a family who gives the Lord the place of supreme rule, and we choose to uphold his word and commandments. It's a choice. It's a choice. You have a choice to make now that you're being informed now that now that i'm giving you the inf this information you have a choice to make are there changes that i need to make and am i going to and make those changes amen what this is iron sharpening session that's what we're here for right it says his name shall be re reverenced under our roof that he has given us god gave you the roof god gave you the home and he can take it from you in a blink of an eye so you need to be thankful for it and show him, him reverence for it. Amen. We speak words of praise and esteem about the Lord. In this home, the Lord will be high and lifted up. And his presence will, will fill every room. Every room. Those bedrooms. Mm -mm. Ain't no locks. You only, only, only time you need to go in there when you get dressed. Right. Ain't no closing the door and sitting in your room all day, isolating yourself. I don't. What are you doing in there? If you want to be in your room, that's fine. I'll, each of my children have their own room. I think it's I, I thank God that he has blessed us with a house big enough to do that. But I also think it's important for people to have their own space when it's when it's possible. That's not always possible. But when it is, that's a blessing. Right. And so I understand that people want to be by themselves sometimes, especially when you're in a big family. But if you're going to be in that room, the door going to be open. If you're not getting dressed, if you're not getting dressed, the door needs to be open. Because what are you doing? Right? There, there's there's accountability here. Oh, they need their privacy. Well, no, they don't. Because <laughs> whose house is this? It's not the house. They don't pay no bills. Come on. This is training time while they're young. They got plenty of time to have their own house and make their own rooms and do what they want to do. But while they're in my house, you live by my rules and my rules are set according to the standards of God, according to the word of God. In the Bible, they didn't have no room. Everybody lived in the same one, one room, one room tent. They had a one room tent. <laughs> they had a one room tent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No antichrist spirit is welcome or able to operate in this house. I break the power of any opposing spirit or influence and close the door to all things that dishonor God. You have to come against anything that opposes the thing of things of God. Any spirit, there are spirits in that music. In ungodly music, stop letting your children listen to it. Those are spirits that are saturating their minds and their hearts. 
any any influence that is opposing God. Those friends that are cussing up a storm, that are having inappropriate relationships with boys and girls, that's a negative influence. One of my children, I let them try school out. Mm. God want me to say it. It's going to help somebody. All right. I let them try school because my children have been homeschooled for like seven, eight years now. Okay. But they're getting older. So I understand that it's important for them to be able to be around other people and see how they respond. Because guess what? I don't want their first experience to be um, I would rather not be now if this is what it has to be, this is what it has to be. And every child is different. But I would rather them not go to college and just be thrown into this whole atmosphere and and then just be caught off guard. No, I'm going to gradually teach you how to transition into being around people who don't think the same way that we think, who don't believe the same way that we believe, who don't behave the same way that we behave, that our standards are to behave, right? And so they got there. And, 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 and yeah, you, yeah, no, you come on home. You come, you come on back home because you're not ready. You're not ready yet. So <laughs> we'll try again next year. Right. And so, but you, but, but I understand that, but the influences, you have to be careful about what the influences are. And if you see that the influences are influencing the negatively, negatively, you need to be the parent and step in and intervene and do what needs to be done to block that opposing influence. Amen? Even if it's family, somebody need to hear. Even if it's family, somebody need to hear. If the, if your family is an opposing spirit, is an, an opposing influence to what you are, um, the standards of how you raise your children, you, you, you just might have to uh, cut them off. And it is what it is. Amen. Amen. I remember, I remember a time. Oh boy. God has just got me spilling all the tea. <laughs> I remember a time <clears throat> when we first got married and our children were little. <clears throat> we went to a family event. I ain't gonna tell you whose family it was. It ain't don't matter if it was his family or my family. Glory to God. But we went to a family event. And one of the family members <clears throat> was trying to influence them to disobey the instructions that I just gave. And <clears throat> this other person heard me. They heard my instructions and I turned my back and they whispering. They, they would, I, you ain't got to do that. Or they no, or they was handing them the very thing that I told them. They, that's what it was. That's exactly what it was. I told them they could not have that. And I turned my back and they gave it to them. Now these my, my children were little. They know better now, but they were little. So it was still a lot of we was we was just starting the training, right? I said you can't have that. And they heard me say you can't have that. I turned my head and they gave it to them. Nope. You are opposing what I just told them. Don't come against what I just told my kids. I am the mama. You don't come against, come behind me and tell them different instructions. So what happened? I packed my children up and we left. Not, I'm not going to sit in that kind of environment and let you think that it's okay. No, you have to be bold enough to make some hard decisions and to ruffle some feathers and to make some, some people mad. Because guess what? When I stand before God, they ain't the ones that got to take account for how my children were raised. I am the one. I'm the one that has to answer to God. And so God gave those children to me and you're going to do what I said. <laughs> and if anybody opposes that, family or not, then you just might have to cut them off for a time, for a season and pray for them that y'all can be reunited and come back together because family is important. Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear my heart. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Decent, decent, decent. All right. So the banner written upon the doorpost of this house is, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope that was a blessing to you. I hope you were encouraged to either continue allowing 
um, that to be your family motto. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I also hope that it was encouragement for those of you who, who are not uh, living up to that motto, that standard, that, that requirement for your home, that you begin to do so. Amen. That you begin to do so. Father, I thank you for who you are, for the privilege and the honor to know you, to worship you and to be called into your presence as your own. I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for your word and its ability to teach us and to help us and to sharpen us and to encourage us and to strengthen us and to direct us. I thank you for your word, for it is our basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. I thank you for the Bible. I thank you for the word. I thank you for your instructions. I thank you for Holy Spirit that gives us the wisdom. And, the, and that is our helper to obey your word. Father, hallelujah. Allow Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Uh, do a work in those who are hearing. Allow, allow those who are hearing to have a desire uh, for their homes to be a home where everyone in it serves God. Lead God and direct them. Give them insight and direction and principle and steps um, to help them to make whatever changes need to be made and to keep in place whatever things are in place to make you the, the, the preeminence, the priority in, in our homes. I thank you, Father. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. Come back for another episode. These are pretty good. I think I'm going to keep on doing them. I might, I think I'm a key. That's my intention. I, I ain't going to, I ain't going to make no absolutes, but it is my intention um, to come on here and share these things with you, at least through our time of fasting. But if God says otherwise, then God says otherwise. I always yield to Holy Spirit, but these have been helping me and I hope they help you. And um, I look forward to every opportunity to be a help to you, um, to be a help to you, to, 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 so that you can live the abundant life that Christ, Christ offers. Amen. Amen. If you um, have not already, make sure you join the Facebook group, make sure you um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, and also <clears throat> if this um, was a blessing to you, if any of the, 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 the bless the teachings or the, the videos or whatever I share with you that the, the, um, are a blessing to you, be a blessing to me. Be a, be a financial blessing to me. It's okay. Right. And so, um, I think I had put my, oh, is that the wrong one? Oh Lord. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Is this something? Let me see what this says. Luke six forty five. for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. That's a good word. Let me see what else to say. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth. This must be some more scripture people want. This ain't the right ticker, but it must be the right ticker. James 3.10, this should not be so. Whatever it is, leads to ungodliness. Anything that leads to ungodliness should not be so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for whoever needed that word. But this is the ticker I was trying to put up. Those are the scriptures that I went over today, um, the reminders and the link to be a blessing if God lays it upon your heart too. I thank God that um, he allows me to freely give. Um, and so um, if God lays it upon your heart, just be obedient. And if he doesn't, keep on coming back and getting getting this free word, this free encouragement. Amen. Amen. Hey, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I was going to invite you out um, if you're in the local area to church. To church, to church, Abundant Life Ministries, 2370 Hospital Drive in Aliquippa. If you are in um, the local Beaver County, uh, Pennsylvania area, be sure to um, like the Abundant Life Ministries of Aliquippa Facebook page and stay connected to all that God is, is doing. Um, God is, is doing great things, new things um, through the ministry. And so get on there, stay connected. We got some stuff coming up. And um, yeah. Be blessed and be a blessing. I love you all so much. Bye-bye. My heart's desire is that this content was a blessing to you. If it was, please be a blessing to me. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you join our Facebook group, Woman to Woman with Lady Ayesha Fisher. Love you.